the run game, man. It's time to have a conversation about this run game because we were, you know, touting Aaron Cromer as, yeah. uh, you know, we basically gave him a statue by before he even stepped foot. At one it's in my living room, room right now. It's taking up a ton of space. Um, and obviously, it's been disappointing thus far. It's concerning. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about it. You guys should be concerned. We're we're concerned. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a small sample. It's only three games, and you know when we're talking about how why they're struggling. I mean, obviously, injuries are a major factor here. And what else plays a factor, Anthony, in offensive line play when you're talking about five guys and even tight ends working together to run the ball? I think the chemistry piece is one that immediately ticks up for me, especially with you know we saw. A lot of inside zone from the Bills. We saw some duo as well um, and outside zone as well. But so much of the functionality of zone runs and duo runs, you know, you and I were talking about this offline. That this is, again, this is just one, you know, microcosm of it. Double teams are such a key important piece of that. And the and an important part of the double team is you having the chemistry with that other offensive lineman because you meet that, you know, first defensive lineman, you feel the double team, one of you peels off and gets to the second level. That takes chemistry, that takes timing, that takes feel, along with everything else that exists on the offensive line in the run game, your execution piece, but especially in these zone concepts where you're working off these double teams and these duo runs, it's it's a big chemistry factor. And you go back all the way through training camp, Spencer Brown missed time, Ryan Bates missed time, Roger Saffold missed time. Now you come into this game and you're already coming in, into the game with your second string center. And then you have to put in your third string center and you're putting Tommy Doyle at guard and Questenberry is in all of these players that don't necessarily have these reps together and have all this time to work on that chemistry and work on that piece. And it definitely showed with the backups. I think it's also showing a little bit with the starters. That's also part of why we're saying, you know, it's a small sample size. We're only three weeks in you got to give this group time to gel and process the, the, I think the fair question to ask is how much time do they need? Is it going to be by December? Is it by week six? Is it next week? When does that line start to gel? When does that chemistry start to take hold? Yeah. And the passing game, it's again, it's, it's been kind of brought back over um, from Dable system. So Dorsey implemented some of his things, but mainly it's still Dable system with some new wrinkles, but the run game is relatively new. Uh, we're talking Cromer coming in and, and tweaking some things. So I do think it's going to take time. It's going to take chemistry mm -hmm. and, and rapport for the offensive line. And, you know, the injuries obviously are a major factor. When you don't Huge. have Mitch Morse, uh, we were talking about last week, like you can't necessarily get the ball on the perimeter as well as you want to when you, mm -hmm. you know, especially on some of those pin and pulls, as someone said, they're not running as many of those quite yet. Uh, you're not getting, you know, Morse on the perimeter and you're not getting James Cook on the perimeter all that often um, thus far. So, Let's look mm -hmm. at some football outsiders adjusted line stats. It's a really good website. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, uh, some really good stuff here. So if you look at the first column adjusted line yards, the bills at 3.43 are 32nd in adjusted line yards, uh, power success rate. So that's like third and fourth down in one, I believe uh, runs by running backs, 23rd stuff rank, how often they uh, take a loss or only make it back to the line of scrimmage are their 21st. Second level, so that's like 5 to 10 yards. How often running backs are able to get to 5 to 10 yards? They're 26th. Open field, weirdly enough, it's second, but that one I'd have to dive into a little more because they've had a couple explosive plays. I, I'm not understanding mm -hmm. how they uh, kind of you know compute that. But as you can see, these rankings are not good. And so, yes, you should be concerned. Um, but what are your thoughts on like the formations they're using, the personnel they're using? Um, when it comes to the run game, is it, is it something that, um, you know, maybe they need to tweak something like what are your thoughts on, on Dorsey's run game and Cromer's run game so far when it comes to like formations and personnel? You know, I really liked week one, um, to, you know, to kind of put a holistic perspective together. I really liked you, you broke it down in an episode and I put a bunch of clips together on Twitter as well. I liked all the surge motion that they were using. I like what they were doing with Reggie Gilliam. I, I like more Reggie Gilliam in the run game, but I want it to be, so I'm okay with personnel I think I want more I want more gap scheme runs from this offense that's what I'm not satisfied with at this point whether it's pin and pull whether it's power whether it's counter especially with how they're using 21 personnel last year in 2021 they were in 21 personnel 10 percent of the time through week two this year 24 percent and I like the variability I like getting Reggie Gilliam out into the flat I like sending him out on pass routes 
but I want some of that power aspect to this Bills offense if we're going to go with those personnel groupings and then function in the play action and pieces after that. I, I think that's where everything for formation and personnel I'm okay with at this point. I would like to see just a change more in scheme or potential style of attack, especially with – and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to pull the plug on zone, but with how they were successful down the stretch last year with gap schemes, whether it was, again, just simple pin and pull on a shotgun or putting Reggie Gilliam in there and going with an offset eye or a strong eye and running power and counter, I would like to see more of that gap scheme attack, especially considering how much this offensive line is struggling just to function on double teams and climbing to the second level. Yeah, I like your point on 21 personnel because obviously Gilliam got that extension and he's been yeah. on the field a lot, as you said. Um, you know, in prior years, Dable did a lot of studying of like the McVeighs and Shanahan's. We talked about that and some of the trends that they use. And we saw it with Cromer in that first week, as you talked about, um, and in that 21 personnel, that fullback usage, that Gilliam usage, a fullback tight end type guy. I mean, there's a reason they, they like Gilliam and, you know, uh, they've done a good job with him in there when they, whether you want to call it 21 or 12, but. I mean, they're top five in 21 personnel usage right now. Like, that's that's surprising to see. And it's kind of echoes back to last year, the second half of last year, where they started using Gilliam a little more. Mm -hmm. um, I just remember, like, the Falcons game you know, when he's at, you know, Motors able to bust out there. Like, yep. they started using that fullback role a little more. So they're kind of carrying that over. But what I found interesting is a stat that we always talk about, and we always talk about it when it comes to the run game. It's Ooh, tell them about run, it. running versus light boxes. And what is a light box? A light box, as you can see here, hopefully you guys can see this. I'll zoom in a little more. Uh, how many defenders are in the box, all right? So a light box is six or less. Um, even would be about seven, and then eight or nine or more. Now, a lot of this has to do with the formation, too. So it's a little mm -hmm. noisy. There's some you know muddiness to this, but we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. So... So far in three games, again, this is only three games. It's a small sample. Right now, you can see the Bills are right here. They have 17 attempts versus light boxes. So 17 rushing attempts across the board. That includes a quarterback versus light boxes in three games. That's ranked 21st by attempt. Now, through three games last year versus light boxes, they had 57 attempts. That was ranked first. So, again, it's the first three games, and it's, it's a, a narrow way to look at this stat. But it's something we've always talked about. The Bills needed to be better against running against light boxes. And they're not getting as many light boxes this year. Uh, you know, and that's something that, you know, you have to study the film to kind of find out why that is. Uh, it could be formations, could be personnel, how, you know, their alignments and all that stuff. So um, that, that number right there is pretty, pretty eye-opening. And, and we're going to have to let it play out a little more and let the sample get a little larger so that we can study it. But it's something we're going to have to address. Oh, a thousand percent. I, I, I think, you know, again, not even just for us because we, we, we diagnosed it in season and off season, but then we sat down with Mitch Morse here in the film room and we talked about like, Oh, you know, what were some different things you saw from defensive fronts in 2021? And the first thing he said was, you know, teams called our bluff and they dared us to run against light boxes and we didn't, you know, so we're trying to course correct that. And I just think that was something that we anticipated seeing because of the nature of the Bills offense. Having that Josh Allen pass first spread offense is just built to run against light boxes. For me right now, my initial thought, especially after watching the film and seeing the percentages, I'm thinking because they've run so much 21 personnel or they've gone with their, their 12 uh, personnel percentages up as well. If you're just focusing on like Sweeney and Knox or Morris and Knox, whatever have you, I think because they're going with heavier personnel, they're seeing more regular or, you know, heavier boxes because of their personnel groupings and formations, because when they're going, yes, when they're going 21 and 12, sometimes you'll see like, like, well, we saw in this past game on a necessity, like Gilliam in the slot or Gilliam out wide. But a lot of times it's your traditional, like two tight end formation, tight ends attached to the line. The other tight end or Gilliam is hipped off that tight end. I think we're seeing more defensive alignments that are meeting the formational alignments. And that's right. potentially why we're seeing less light box runs so far. But again, to your point, I, I, it, it's sample size right now. We're only yeah. three games in. This does not make a trend or a season. We have to see, is this who they are and what they are, or is it just being dictated by certain personnel formations or personnel groupings and formational alignments yeah. up to this point in the season? Yeah, and I posted a tweet earlier about 21 personnel, and uh, they the Bills right now average 4.8 yards per attempt uh, out of 21 personnel. That's sixth overall. That's pretty good, as opposed to 3.1 
yards per attempt in 2021, which was 17th. 19 of their 25 rushes out of 21 personnel, according to SIS, have come on first down, which is uh-huh. surprising. It's like, okay, you have 21 personnel. Oh, here comes a run. Yeah. <laughs> They're averaging 5.7 yards per attempt on first down, 21 personnel runs. So, again, we don't know if it's just your traditional strong eye, weak eye, eye formation type looks. That's something you have to, you have to dive into the film. Or sometimes they do align them out in spread type formations, yeah. and they even throw to Gilliam out of those personnel groupings. So yeah. that's just something to keep an eye on because light box runs are something that you know we've been studying the last couple of years. I was surprised to see how um, you know how little they're getting them this year. I mean, that's from last year. If you look at 222 attempts versus light boxes, not including the postseason, that's like 13 attempts per game last year. Mm. Whereas this year it's like six. So I mean. Huge. It's that's a big difference, and again, it's probably because of personnel, and it's probably because of formational alignments. But it's something to keep an eye on, because we always liked getting the box numbers in the Bills' favor, mm-hmm. especially when you have a quarterback that can run. He becomes that extra guy. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on when, when you know talk about the run game. Yes, you should be concerned. We're concerned, but it's still a small sample, and mm-hmm. it's going to take some time to gel. This is the new portion of the offense. This is the new portion of the coaching staff. Uh, when it comes to, you know, the transition from Dable uh, to Dorsey. And so it is going to take time. And, yeah, I mean, we still have the statue of Cromer in our living room. But we'll uh, we'll leave it in the living room. We won't put it at one Bill's drive quite yet. (laughs) 